Okay, so this is the studio part of the Begin Again unit. We've already talked about fertility and how eggs are considered to be fertility symbols and how Pasanka eggs, which are the Ukrainian folk art eggs, like the one pictured, um, are traditionally given at Easter time and how the Tsar of Russia commissioned Fabergé eggs made out of very elaborate materials, gold and jewels, and was giving those at Easter time. And then the peasants who were starving got kind of cranky about him spending all that money. And it helped start the Russian Revolution. So for our studio project, we are not having a revolution. Instead, you are making kind of Pasenka eggs. So your studio prompt is to create one to three Pestanka style decorated eggs. So you need to use some of the traditional style forms in it. And there are options. Again, you can use alternative materials. There's not a deduction from your grade for any alternative materials. As you can see this egg, it has, it's pretty simple when you look at it and break it down. You have kind of a diamond in the middle and then at the corners of the diamond are hearts and then coming up in the middle of each of the diamond sides you have these three straight lines with the little lines on it to create kind of branches a stick figure deer with a little bird and then just some more dots and lines and a little tiny sun so it looks very complicated but when you break it down it really isn't Okay, so your suggested materials are to use a real egg, a chicken egg. You need vinegar if you're going to dye the egg, a pencil, an eraser, Sharpie marker, and colored markers for adding to your design. Options, if you don't have a real egg, you could use a fake egg. There are a couple of different types. You can use the plastic two-part Easter eggs or the there are some other solid fake Easter eggs. You could use a smooth stone. You could draw an egg shape on a piece of blank paper. If you are doing one of those, you do not need vinegar. And if you do not have dye, you can use food coloring. You can use paint. You can use watercolors. You can use coffee or tea or Kool-Aid as a dye. If you do not have a Sharpie marker, you can press heavy with your pencil for the outlines. You can use an ink pen or other markers. And instead of colored markers, you can also use acrylic paint, colored pencils, things of that nature. Tool-wise, you're going to need a cup for dye or paint if you're using that. And if you're using a real egg, you need to have a needle or unbent paper clip or anything else that is sharp and small. So process. Um, for the real egg, I'm going to go through the directions for blowing the egg. This is also what I'm demonstrating in live class on Wednesday, so please watch that recording. You can save and use the egg. When you blow an egg, you could use it for cooking. You could feed it to your dog. You could do whatever you want with it. Uh, your art will last forever if you blow the egg. If you choose to boil the egg, like you would with a regular Easter egg, you're gonna have to throw it out eventually if you don't eat it later. You can't keep it because eventually it will rot even though it's boiled. If you're using an egg substitute, the plastic eggs and rocks, if at all possible, paint them white and then let them dry so that your designs will show up. When you're drawing, start by drawing an oval that is at least as large as an egg. Larger is okay. I will link some examples of this. All right, so when you blow your egg, what you're going to need is your egg, a cup, a paper towel or a rag, something small and sharp, a needle or a tea pen, an unbent paper clip, an egg carton or something else to hold the egg in. So you're going to use your sharp object first and start at the ends of the egg long ways 
and you're going to gently drill a hole in the end of the egg. If you just try to stab it, it's just going to slide right off. So put it down against the shell, hold the egg firmly, and just kind of start twisting until you have a hole in the egg. Make sure when you're ready for the step, that you don't have any like lip balm or lipstick on or any lotion on your hands because that will make the egg hard to clean. Eggs are already naturally greasy and any grease marks are going to show when you try to dye it. All right. After you have the holes in the egg, put your unbent paper clip or a needle or something into the hole and stir it around and that will break up the membranes. You can see the membranes when you watch the live class video because I showed them to you in the egg and then remove. If you don't have something like that, put your fingers on either side, you know, block the holes and shake it really hard. And then you hold your egg over the cup or bowl or something and through the narrow end of the egg start blowing the egg comes out in the cup you can then use the egg or discard it this is takes the trick at first until you kind of figure it out um, if you're blowing really hard and nothing's happening then the membranes aren't broken up enough to let the air force it out so you need to shake it some more or stab it some more and, you know, you can make sure your holes are big enough. You don't want them the size of like just a pinhole, uh, but you don't want them huge either. Okay. Sometimes your egg will break and that's okay. All right. Just get another one if you can. Um, if possible, do three eggs because that is a good number to really get a good one and account for any accidental breakage. But I know that eggs are in short supply around sometimes, so do what you can. All right, after you have your egg blown, you need to rinse it with water. And after it is rinsed, wipe it down with vinegar or wash it with vinegar to remove the grease. It doesn't matter what kind of vinegar. Um, the vinegar dissolves. Dry it with a paper towel and put it in your container and let it sit for a little bit some of the liquid will drip out of the bottom of the egg and that's okay the next thing you have to do after you have your egg blown is to dye it what dye is is dry pigment that's mixed with water and there's a difference between dye and paint paint sits on top of a surface when you paint a paper or canvas or anything else the paint just is on the surface dye sinks into a surface and gets into whatever it is and colors it all the way through if you look over on your right at the picture there is dry pigments for dye and then you measure them out and mix them together in order to get your colors so when you're coloring your egg your goal is to get a solid background color if you are dyeing you can use the easter egg dye mix that is commercially available that um, maybe you already have and just to mix it according to the directions on the package it usually calls for mixing um, it with a little bit of water and some vinegar you could also use food coloring put some drops in water with a little bit of vinegar like an eighth of a teaspoon or you could use strong coffee strong tea strong kool-aid if you're using kool-aid mix the kool-aid with the water you don't need to add vinegar if it's coffee tea or kool-aid because it's already super acidic uh, but if you're using kool-aid don't mix it like you were going to drink it mix like the package with water so it gets a really intense color if you're doing some of the options if you're using watercolors you can paint on the egg or you could use it as a background for if you're drawing on paper and just paint the whole thing with the watercolor if you're using acrylic paint you can cover your plastic eggs and rocks if um, you don't have any paint you can use that coffee tea and kool-aid as paint on paper and it will be faint but it's an option 
Okay, so when you dye the egg, you, use, you have your clean eggs, the gloves if you're picky. If not, you're at home, so you can just wash. Everybody's washing their hands lots now. Don't waste your gloves on this. And your dye. Uh, place your egg in dye, whether it's dye or, again, the coffee or, you know, watered-down paint, whatever. The longer it sits, the darker the color is. If you have blown your egg, it's going to float. You have to hold it down to get all of it dyed. Um, you also have the option, and sometimes it's easier with blown eggs, you do one side, just let it float, and then turn it over so the other side can float. If you have brown eggs instead of white eggs, that's absolutely fine. They have a darker color. Uh, blue and purple kind of turn out a different color brown on them, but the orange and red and yellow work nicely on them. And if you're using coffee or tea, you're going to get a brown color to it and Kool-Aid, whatever color Kool-Aid it is. Now, don't ever try to dye an egg with soda. Um, if you try to use Coke or Sundrop or whatever, the acids and chemicals in them start breaking down the egg and transforming it. It will make the shell a lot more porous and it won't really color it. And if you leave it overnight in something like Coke, uh, really strange things happen. So experiment. I'm going to do that experiment and I'll post it on our announcements. Okay, so after you dye the eggs, hold the egg over the sink or outside over grass and shake it to get all the water out or let it drip out overnight. I'll put a bit of paper towel down so it can absorb that liquid and let them dry because you really want them to be dried, not just the outsides, but a lot of times if you're dyeing the blown eggs, then the insides will, you know, still have some water in them that needs to come out. Now, the reason that you don't dye them and then blow them is because when you go to blow them, the dye is going to come off on you and stay in your mouth, and that's not okay. Um, if you are doing boiled eggs, you don't have to worry about the dye being on the inside, but just know that you can't keep them forever. If you do whole raw eggs, yeah, you could dye those, but then when you're working on it, if it slips and you break it, you have a ginormous mess. All right, so options. If you're using watercolor on a real egg, you can brush it on. If you layer up watercolor, it will create darker colors. But the caution with that is when you're working on drawing on the egg, it's hard to avoid getting your fingerprints and the paint coming off as you work because of the oils and sweat on your fingers will lift watercolor. If it's on paper, just brush the watercolor on the paper. You can also create different effects with watercolor by sprinkling salt on when it's wet and then let it dry and brush the salt off and you'll get little speckles. Keep to one or two main colors for your background. If you are using acrylic paint on an egg, use a light color, water it down, paint your background. If it's acrylic paint on a plastic egg, it's tricky. You have to paint each half separately and again, paint them white first let it dry and then put them together and then you can draw and paint but you have to be careful because the paint will scratch watercolor isn't going to stick uh to a plastic egg or you know nothing else is going to stick to the plastic egg except for maybe sharpie um unless it has a coat of paint on it first if you're using a rock paint the rock white you can use acrylic paint or some old house paint let it dry and then paint the opposite side and let that dry and then coffee tea and kool-aid you can paint on paper like watercolors to create a background so here are some examples of pasanka eggs these are real pasanka eggs so these were done with the hot wax and you can see how elaborate the designs are and that's what i want you to look at is the denseness of the design. This isn't just polka dots on the egg. I don't expect you to get this elaborate unless you want to. But again, like the one we looked at before, if you break it down, you know, here you have a complex design in the middle that's kind of in a diamond shape. 
and then ovals around it and those ovals have patterns there's like little triangles on the outside little dots on this one and then some triangles pointing into the center this flower in the center green the next ring around with colors more green more flowers black and then a border around this has a band that goes horizontally across the egg with flower circles in it and arcs and as you look at these do what i just did and kind of break them down into simple forms the design qualities of the Senka eggs they're geometric they have a lot of patterns patterns are things that repeat over and over and they're detailed again things are simpler than they look if you look at this you have the black diamond shape as a border going around the sides and then just a simple you know eight petal daisy type flower inside of that the little triangles make them more complicated by putting lines in them you build up your pattern gradually so for your design and this works the same whether you're using a real egg or an optional egg or paper you start off by using your pencil and design divide your egg into areas and these lines act as a grid to plan your design so you choose okay like this is simple it's just a band going up and down this is divided into four quarters this is more complex lines of patterns curves whichever one you want okay so that's the first thing you do is give yourself a grid to work on and then use geometric shapes or traditional symbols and create patterns in the areas draw these on with pencil and here are some traditional symbols with their um that are pretty simple with their meanings uh you have the deer for prosperity the stamina which is the wheat sheaf loyalty patience is the sun um, stars are the little dots i've included on classroom there is also a sheet a cheat sheet of designs and patterns that you can look at or you could google different kinds of designs and patterns when you go to add color if you're using acrylic paint use a toothpick and some of the paint don't water it down you just need a tiny 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 bit of paint and you add dots of color all of these don't try to draw like a line you just draw put a dot down like if i was making this green leaf put a green dot down and then use your toothpick to kind of push it into that teardrop shape and then if to fill in areas you can put dots close together if you're using colored pencil or marker just color in like a coloring book and your goal is to fill up the areas that you want color in after you have your color then you ink or if you don't have colored things and you're just using sharpie or press down hard pencil uh, you're going to trace your designs with the sharpie marker or the pencil if you have black areas in the egg color them in with the marker as well and your goal is to create strong black lines that act as divisions this top egg here is just white and sharpie and black and white is fine if you don't have dye or if you don't have anything to color the egg with um, even if it's just pencil and white but what i want you to notice is the design is still elaborate and there are solid areas that are colored in and that helps the patterns stand out so that's really an important thing to do this one on the right again it looks complicated but it's not that complicated think about these black areas as just black squares that are put turned to be diamonds with a little star flower inside and then by outlining you create a really clean edges that make everything stand out and then you turn it in and you need to have at least one completed egg your design has to follow a traditional fasanka style so it needs to be detailed and geometric and cover the surface 
photograph it and upload just like we do for every single assignment. And that is it. If you have any questions, you can email me, you can text me. My office hours are in the afternoon from one to four in Google Classroom. Um, in the Google Meet, the code for that is my last name, Rye, W-R-Y-E. And I look forward to seeing your eggs. That's it. Thanks.